Oh, right, right, right. What's up, everybody? I hope you're having a fantastic day. We are back with another episode of the Salt Mines, and it's been a hot minute for me because I've been on holiday, but I'm back here to delve into the StarCraft player's uh, <laughs> mental torture, uh, self-inflicted pain, frustration, and, of course, their inane and absolutely bizarre complaints that people make when they're losing at video games. Up here in the top left, we've got Praetor, Praetor Plato, or Plato, I guess. We're just going to call you Plato. Plato, I think. So we've got Plato in the top left, the Protoss player. Down in the bottom right, we've got Omega. But it's more like Omega. So we're just going to stick with Omega because that would be a little bit too hard to pronounce each time. <laughs> but I'm very excited to be back. Salt Mines is, of course, a show which uh, I've been getting a lot of messages about. People saying they really enjoy it. What can I say, guys? High effort content for me. Uh, you know, just basically finding games and, and you all sending them in of people having some of the most bizarre and ridiculous complaints, rage, and general saltiness that I've ever seen. So keep sending them in, please do. Uh, I feel like it's been a real study into the human condition, and, you know, it's funny because I've been on holiday for a few weeks, and I've been back on the ladder the last few days, and it really, like, it's it's kind of funny. I feel like the, the brain calluses have kind of worn off a little bit, and I'm way worse at handling losses after being off the ladder for a few weeks. I'm sitting there just like... Starcraft's a hard video game. I think there's just something about the the disconnect between, especially when you watch a lot of Starcraft, what you expect to do, which is, you know, you watch your favorite players, you watch Maru and Serral, and you're like, oh, I want to play like that, I can do that. And then you hop on the ladder, and it's never quite like that, is it? It's, it's always a little bit... Uh, falling short of your expectations. Now, Plato is going to be going for what appears to be a proxy... Oh my god, the T-Bag build! Okay, uh, Plato is going for a proxy double Robo. So with this, you can get out a couple of Immortals, a Warp Prism, and if you want, you could even follow up with the Robo Bay, which is what actually makes it the T-Bag build, um, and then start rallying Disruptors into their base. But, oh, Omega scouts it! Omega comes in and already scouts what's up. But Omega already has so many SCVs running around the map. Omega's losing a lot of mining time. So this is a pretty inefficient opening. For some reason, Omega has three SCVs on the map. He's scouting everywhere for proxies. I guess that was just to, you know, sent out before they knew about the proxy. He's now going to pull SCVs and a Marine. Oh, Plato's going to need to build an extra pylon or two if he wants to get this up. And you know what? If he builds an extra pylon, maybe a, a battery as well would be great. That'd be fantastic. But if Omega can take down that probe, then that's going to be a problem. The probe gets one more pylon placed, but the Marine does take it down. Now, we do see an Immortal starting up. Plato's, Plato's going to need to Chrono Boost that, but isn't doing it just yet. The Adept, very slow to get across this map, was busy chasing that scouting SCV. And these SCV in this Marine Pool from Omega is going to shut this cheesy opening down. Oh, damn. Chrono Boosts are now going down. That Immortal, it needs another 19 seconds of build time. That Pylon, though, is already in trouble. Another probe being pulled. No, another Stalker. If you don't get a probe over here, you can't rebuild the Pylon. Plato does target the Marine, but look at that depowering it with just eight seconds left. And Omega says, that's good enough for me. It says, learn to play. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, it's not good enough for me. I also want to insult you a little bit. Now, the thing is, these Immortals could still come out and do some stuff. So Omega hasn't completely shut it down just yet. There is a probe coming out. It's going to repower that. The Immortals will eventually hit the field. So Omega needs to keep looking for some positive trades here. Now, the Adept is going to go down if it doesn't pull back right away. Omega with some good Cyclone Micro. Very nicely done. He's actually going to send it across the map. I really feel like getting rid of that Stalker has to be the priority. But Omega right now, chilling on one base. Not building SCVs. And he's actually building a bunker in the opponent's wall? What? What is Omega doing? Omega is saying, you proxy me, I'm going to proxy you. But is letting this get repowered right now. So Omega missing a big opportunity to lay the smack down. I think maybe, and the Marines are just patrolling up there. The Cyclone does come out. Magfield's almost ready, which is going to give these guys double damage to armored units. There's two Cyclones out. If they just go and depower that, that'd be good. But uh-oh, the Immortal's out. The Immortal is the natural predator to the Cyclone. Remember, there hasn't been anything in chat from Plato just yet. Omega's already dropped the learn to play, basically inferring that they've already won. But remember, Immortals can kill Cyclones so quickly. Good pullback on the Cyclone so far for Omega. If Omega pulls all the Marines down, Marines can tank not too bad versus Immortals as they're not armored units and do all right. Looks like that bunker finished, but then there's, I guess this is to block him from expanding. I don't know. That's going to go down. Immortals starting to breach the wall here, but these Cyclones, if they can get lock-ons without getting hit in return, they can do massive damage 
And look at that. Oh, man. That is huge. One of the Immortals goes down. The other one's shield is gone. This guy comes in and depowers the Pylon. Omega with some slick moves here. The Cyclones once again get a lock on. Kill the other Immortal. And the Cyclone survives on four hit points. Okay, Play-Doh's in big trouble. I think Play-Doh might be the one who's going to be uh, getting the worst end of this. These Magfield Cyclones do so much damage. And oh, no, 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 no. Another Immortal almost goes down. The only problem here is, remember, Omega is not macroing behind this. Neither player is. So it's really just about how the next fights go. If Omega just kind of lowers the depot, runs down with the Marines, the SCVs, the Cyclones, could absolutely kill this last Immortal, even another one that pops easily, win this game, right? But this Cyclone pops out, goes for the flank, sees that's all being repowered. That Cyclone will get out of there. But Command Center goes up on the high ground. Behind this, a Nexus goes up. This is one of those games where both players are locked on such low tech. It really comes down to who is just going to basically transition harder um or who's gonna suddenly win a fight right so if these cyclones get hit by the immortals if you get three immortals out you can one shot a cyclone so even with two stalkers two immortals i think that's enough to one shot a cyclone indeed it is so this is really scary right now for omega if omega isn't watching as long as omega does that picks off a stalker pulls away it's gonna be good but uh oh uh oh run 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 omega omega okay does another double lock Oh, gets a Stalker, and the Immortal Barrier's gone as well. But, you know, the Marines and the SCVs, a lot of SCVs aren't mining right now. Omega's so tunnel vision on the micro, there's like eight, nine SCVs that aren't mining. Omega is just chilling right now. Oh my god. Okay, so Omega is actually freaking out, and he's supply blocked as well. Does get on supply block there as a depot drop does go down. But behind this, Plato is starting to transition. Blink's on the way. Probes are being chrono boosted. A third base goes down. And still Omega is just staring at the Cyclones. That's what I'm talking about. Those Cyclones are very vulnerable. So Omega keeps staring at these Cyclones. We've got to watch this from Omega's camera view. Omega sends a Cyclone in, gets it one or two of probes, is still trying to spend all of the APM on microing this, accidentally moved behind the pillar and blocked their own vision. But Omega is just not prioritizing the bigger picture at all, is just tunnel visioning on these Cyclones. Cyclone on the other side of the map goes down as well. Finally, some more barracks go down. But remember, there's been so little SCV production, the command center isn't making an orbital, nor lifting to move down. And those double robos are still there. So the real trick, this is actually one of those hot tips for you guys. You know, not only do I make fun of players in this show, I give you tips. If someone proxies you, not only defending the proxy initially, but killing the proxy is such a big win. The big weakness of a proxy build is the moment you lose a fight, they get to kill some of your production without even moving across the map. And that's what Omega really missed out on. Finally is going to do it this game, but took so long to get onto it. Now, behind it, it feels like a relatively even match at this point, simply because... The Cyclones mostly died. There's only one Cyclone left, so Magfield, that investment in that upgrade is not that useful. And with Blink coming out, Blink Stalkers, especially with three Immortals, should be more than enough for unupgraded Marines. Now, once these Tech Labs kick in, Stim and Shields comes in, maybe a plus one upgrade, uh, maybe a Starport to build some Medivacs, that'll be a different story. But right now, notice how Omega's taking a third gas has a thousand gas in the bank so omega desperately needs to take maybe a third command center because that main is going to be mining out very soon whenever a game gets stalled out like this you you mine out your main base compared to your natural so much faster but the starport does go down behind this the templar archives is on the way a seven worker lead for the protoss is not particularly effective and you can see the protoss player plato as well let's let's check control groups here nexus on a control group and the gateway is on a control group Meanwhile, Omega has a Cyclone on one, same Cyclone on two, Command Center on three, Barracks on four, that's all the production, and then just a mixture of single Command Centers and both of the Command Centers on all the other keys. So one of these players who does like to spam things across all 10 control groups and likes to kind of go for that. And I think Omega's done a pretty good job, but I would say the one thing we identify is, look, Omega's scouting and map control and these little fancy micro interactions are great but it's lacking big picture awareness. So Omega's really worried about proxies all game, constantly scouting, but is missing fundamental macro, right? Where's the reactor? We've been supply blocked on 70 while microing a single cyclone to no effect for the last 30, 40 seconds. These are the sort of moves, right, where a player goes, well, I'm doing this one thing really well, therefore I'm playing StarCraft well. But StarCraft is never about just doing one thing well. Omega drops another supply drop, you got to build two, two or three depots right now, right? Finally, okay, two depots go down. Marines, Marauders, Stims coming out. Medivac should be on the way. Omega's also going to scan the back face. So Omega is so kind of frantic to understand where they are in the game. And the thing is, I feel like the order of priorities is like have solid fundamentals and then scout to like add little detailed adjustments to it. 
I think Omega's gonna win anyway, though. This army is actually pretty sick. Is Storm out? Oh, there is Psy Storm, though. There is Psy Storm. Okay, so it all it all depends on how the Psy Storm lands, really. Stim Shields plus one is all gonna be finished in about 40 seconds. At least Stim and Shields will be done for now. There's gonna be two tanks, four Marauders, 22 Marines. It's a very powerful army with the right micro. It definitely could win the game right here. But that is a fourth base. If he lets this fourth base go up, he's in trouble. Omega coming in, even brought some SCVs, which I think has to be an accident. There's a Cyclone on the left side as well. He's got to be careful of the Storm, not to mention that one sentry. Oh, get out of there. Storm, 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 run, Omega. Eats a big giant Storm to the face, but does get most of the bio out of there. Unfortunately for him, there's no medevacs with this army. That next size Storm doesn't do all that much. The tanks are clicked on a pylon. The tanks are clicked on the Nexus. The tanks weren't even shooting the, the base. They weren't even shooting the army. They were shooting the Nexus. He had clicked his tanks onto the Nexus so they didn't even change targets. And Omega loses his shit, playing like a baboon for the last five minutes in the game, says, fucking trash proxy immortal. Fail into 10,000 Nexus into Templar. Fucking hell, Protoss is pathetic dog shit. And leaves the game. Wait, was there, was there anything that I missed in that? So I want, I want to show you guys this fight one more time. This is this is like, I've, I've been here so many times. So, I, and I've, I've probably thought the same thoughts. I just haven't typed them into the, the chat box before. I'm, I, I rage a fair bit. It's just, I keep it in my head. People are always like, how are you so zen? And I'm like, oh, I'm internally screaming, guys, when I lose games as well. But check this out. So Omega clicks the tanks on the Nexus for some reason. Because look, okay, here the tanks are shooting the army. But then he clicks on the pylon, I guess? Because look, the tanks should, now that these units are in range, automatically change targets to the actual attacking units. That's just how unit priority works, right? because those are an actual threat. But his tanks are now clicking the Nexus. Yeah, you can see, oh, he shift clicked. You could see there for a moment that he shift clicked onto the Archon. So even his bio is attacking like the Pylon as well, a lot of it rather than the Archon. And uh, yeah, Omega now going, yep, fucking trash proxy immortal fail, 10,000 Nexus. Protoss is dog shit. Into Templar, Protoss is dog shit. Fucking, yeah, fucking hell, Protoss is dog shit. Nice, nice, nice. Oh my god, that's crazy, man. The insane thing is like you can see the point where Omega won the game and then did what many of us have done when we're winning and got excited and basically just like rolled that victory over to their opponent. And it all started with this moment. At this moment, depowered the Robo, massive start, pulls back because doesn't want to fight the Adept and the Stalker until Cyclones are out. And that's a good move. Come out only once you've got the Cyclone and the four Marines and then go clean up the Adept, the Stalker, win the game. But instead of making that decision, Omega at this point starts shit talking. And I gotta say, this is why you don't get cocky. The moment is like, yeah, you fucking idiot. I shut down your build. And then from here on, for some reason sends a Cyclone out on its own, doesn't bring the Marines, raises the Depot. And just watch the camera. And let's, let's watch this like one minute of just absolutely inane, okay. Good micro. Picking off an adept for free, doing the lock on, kiting, keeping vision. Beautiful. That's good micro. And let's see what we're going to do. Okay, so we can see our SCVs in the base. Now we're going to build a bunker in the wall. Why? It doesn't do anything. A complete nonsense decision. Building another depot, keeping up marine and cyclone production. That's good. But already we've forgotten to build SCVs. Glances back at the base, glances back at the cyclone. Drops a mule, still not building SCVs. For some reason, the Marines are now watching the edge of the main rather than just shutting down this proxy. Comes in, gets a free Stalker kill. Good micro. But still like, no, it's it, it's still like, wait a second, why are we building the bunker and why aren't the Marines coming down? Why are we retreating? Stop the Robos! Why aren't we stopping the Robos? Why are we looking at the bunker, right? It's like unnecessary multitasking. There's there's actually a decent few things going down. And, and now he's building a bunker inside the main base. No, no, sorry, that's the engineering bay going down inside the main base. I don't know why we would need an engineering bay right now on one base against a guy whose entire tech is Robos, which we can just depower. But we come down here, lock onto the pylon, and we've given it too much time, let the immortal get out. Now you could still at this point, grab the Marines, even pull some SCVs if you want, get rid of this production, kill the immortals, you win the game. But instead, <laughs> Omega decides to split the cyclones, one to repair, one to do a flanking maneuver. And this is just classic making StarCraft that harder than it needs to be. I've done this so many times where it's like, hey, you could just grab your superior army and A move their army and win the game. And you're like, no, 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 no. We're going to repair this guy and defend our ramp while doing a flanking cyclone maneuver. And then behind that, we're going to do this other stuff. And it's like, oh, oh, it's so unfortunate. It's so unfortunate, you know, just speaking out of, out of that situation. But in this scenario, it's so fitting because if you shit talk your opponent in a competitive match, 
I feel like there is some sort of lord of competitive activities that just shakes his head, frowns at you, and says, no, 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 naughty boy. Even all this micro was really fantastic, but there was never a strategic move to capitalize upon it. And that's really what ended up costing Omega. You hate to see it, but you also love to see it. That smack talk brought down the ire of the gods, and Omega got smacked down. But wait, it doesn't end there. We've got a chat log to go with this one as well. After the game, Omega whispers, ha ha ha. And 70 APM? Holy fuck, dude. Enjoy your handicap win. Zzz. Fucking trash easy player gets free win because of brain dead Protoss. This is always my favorite insult coming from players because a lot of Terrans we insult Protoss about being brain dead. But usually if you look at any time we lose in a game like this, and I've had it many times myself where I feel like their race is easy, their race is dumb. And I always look at it. And it's always the loss. The main reason is I'm over focusing on like little details and microing things and mechanics, and I'm not focusing on the big picture strategy game. So this is always like the thing where you're like, oh, that's kind of that's kind of ironic, actually. It's like you lost the game because you didn't see the big picture and you weren't thinking about the strategy. You did great cyclone micro. You had some great fancy maneuvers. <laughs> you just it was actually the mechanical side that doesn't take a lot of brain power, which you did really well, but you lost on the mental side, so... Ah, uh, good stuff. Uh, pretty sure you win if you attack with the Cyclones earlier. Response. Uh, okay, nice response. It's like, hey, I think if you attack those Cyclones, you probably could have killed... Absolutely what we were saying. Pretty sure, go fuck yourselves. Oh! <laughs> That's always the best one. You're like, oh, hey man, I'm pretty sure... Like, if you, if, if you win with those Cyclones, you attack those Cyclones, you probably do win. Yeah, pretty sure could fuck yourself. It's just great when you bring out that like childish response where it's it's almost like a muscle reflex for them. You know they can't even control it. They're just they they've been put back into an infantile mindset. Easy mode trash. You are the reason we ruined the game. You guys like or you could have gone for a faster marine timing actually towards the end. Is <laughs> so you are the reason we ruined the game to let moron sick moronic shit like you play along okay so we ruined the game to make it easier for moronic players like this protest but i get it yep enjoy your legit your legit brain dead fucking fuck gin <laughs> fuck gin wins you blue ribbon bitch blue ribbon usually means quality that's a weird insult maybe where, where wherever you viewers are in the world that's an insult calling someone a blue ribbon but is that like saying like they had everything handed to them on a platter is that I don't think I've never heard anyone use that here in Australia. Like normally you just blue ribbons like for like a fancy brand of something, you know, something that's quality, right? So I guess I guess he's saying you play Protoss, it's the blue ribbon race, everything's kind of handled for you because your units are just better. All right, I get it. Um, un, you know, it's 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 out there. It's a little unfamiliar for me, but I like it when people get creative with their insults. I always feel like to really you know, get negative on someone and try and drag them down and make them feel bad, you do want to make them think of it. If you bring out the generic, you're pretty sure go fuck yourself. I don't think people really take that too hard. But if you can actually make them think about it a bit, there's more chance you get in underneath their first line of defenses and get into their subconscious. I spent my money better than you did. More stuff beats less stuff, says Omega. Bro, shut the fuck up. You are dog shit bad, but you chose to be Protoss. <laughs> so any moner can log in and make anything. And I think it's meant to be any monkey. Or anyone? Anyone can log in and make anything and win. Clearly, you're a clear example of it. Proxy fuckchin. He said fuckchin again. Fuckchin double robo that I stopped multiple times into four fuck, four Cajun nexus. Four Cajun nexus. Like, kill yourself if you legit think it's skill that's getting you those wins. You fuckchin. Wait, fuckchin for the third time. Is that specifically to get around the filter, maybe? So it doesn't detect it as a swear word. Fuckchin. <laughs> Fuck Jin, inbred moron. <gasps> this is great. Remember that the double robo never got shut down. It's like, I shut down your double row multiple times. It's like, no, you, you depowered. There's a difference. You depowered it without having an expansion up. You had no actual economic advantage and you refused to capitalize and go out and finish it off, mate. <laughs> nah, I should have been behind after the robo. It was so greedy. I was, I was greedy to play the odds after my robos got shut down. Look, if you'd actually punished it, I was pretty dead. So I was just taking a chance on you not punishing it. So Omega's actually here with an insane person trying to explain the reasoning and say, oh, you know, this is, I did take a gamble. I'm lucky I got away with it. Keep lying to yourself, bro. Fucking 78 PM, literal brain dead shit. But yeah, you deserve wins. I'm done with you, trash. 
And of course, the response, have a nice day, but the player's already blocked communication. Isn't that a classic? What a nice way to get back into it. I like it. Now, remember as well, Omega was the one who started the shit talk with a learn to play. I think in Omega's mind, they're completely justified because the opponent did proxy double robo, a very unfamiliar build, probably hasn't seen it before, probably thought this is just a gimmick cheese build, whatever, it's really dumb, it's a gamble, and probably takes the fact that the opponent did a silly build as an insult in of itself. So I think in Omega's mind, Omega wasn't the instigator because the other player did a build to them, which they don't like. And that I think is justified, absolutely solid logic. I'm totally on Omega's side with this one. What a Chad. All right, let's get into the next one. We've got Gary in the top right side here, a red Terran player up against Void Boy. Not a Protoss, despite the name Void Boy. You'd expect them to be a Void Ray playing Protoss player, but it is just another Terran. So it's a TVT match here. We did get good luck, have fun from Void Boy. None from Gary does that bode for what will come in the future. I have no idea. I, I don't know. Oh, hey, thanks so much, bro. You too. Especially the good luck part, because you'll need it! <laughs> I can't even take that seriously. That's hilarious, guys. Gary hasn't built a single SCV. This is the worst opening I've ever seen. It's it's gas first into barracks, into second gas before a single SCV. And already smack talk. <laughs> this is a trash opening! And you suck, bro, as well. Wait, wait, wait. What the hell? Did Gary send this replay in themselves and then pretend it was Void Boy sending it in? This is this some staged shit? What is this? What does this guy? I feel like Gary's a name we've seen before. Maybe this is just a guy who does this all the time on the ladder. Oh man, I mean Gary. Obviously, I've named SCVs Gary. It seems like a familiar name. I'm not quite sure. Let me know if you guys remember seeing it. Obviously, I've done so many videos over the years. Some of you might have watched something more recent. Let me know if there is another video with Gary in it. You suck, we're very hostile today, huh? Not really. Gary's like, no, 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 this is my normal disposition. Ha ha ha, what a waste, says Gary. Well, because the SCV got blocked. It saw the factory, it knows you're, knows you're doing a one base opening. What? How are you already down five SCVs at the one minute 40 mark? Get the fuck out of here, stupid SCV scum. <laughs> Gary's a character. I like people like Gary. Gary's on 25 APM. Of course, he's using most of his actions to type. That doesn't add to the APM counter. You're gonna get wrecked, bro. Oh my god. Void Boy is, on the other hand, not perfect by any means. 50 APM. So I think we're in Silver League, I would imagine. Maybe, maybe lower end of gold. Um, but Void Boy's actually been building workers pretty consistently and getting a command center, which does bode well. The reactor first into two marines. The reaper could cause trouble. This is a bit of an earlier reaper because Gary skipped all the SCVs at the start. The thing is, he needs to kill five SCVs to make it worth it. So <laughs> if he went like 12 barracks, 12 gas instead of gas first, the reaper could have got in here like six seconds earlier and would have been even harder to defend. The marines will come out and defend this. So reaper only gets a single SCV. Absolutely not worth it. I mean, it's, it's only behind four SCVs now. So that's something for Gary but uh, not enough just yet. As long as Void Boy keeps building Marines, they build way quicker than Reapers. So the Reapers shouldn't really have an angle to get much damage done. Now behind it, it looks like Void Boy is doing more of like a bronze to GM build, right? This looks like, yeah, three racks, expand into three racks. We've got a fusion core on the other side. Okay, so yeah, so the shit talking player is the player who's gonna use the lowest effort unit, is just gonna build a battle cruiser and hope the opponent can't deal with it, which absolutely works a fair amount of the time. Um, what this really comes down to is can Void Boy get stim shields, a big pack of marines up and then just micro them well enough because if the bc gets on like the very edge and you stand there basically it can fight like one marine at a time while it just picks off your army and i've seen a lot of low level players die to that and then just be like no man marines don't beat battle cruisers and i'm like just pull back from the edge of the cliff wait till it comes in and then stim underneath it you can get rid of it and of course once you realize what's up start building uh cyclones and or vikings as needed gary Coming in with three Reapers. There's only six Marines out, but they're split right now. Uh-oh, Void Boy. Very slow response from Void Boy. Void Boy's not watching, but the Reapers have gone deep, so there might not be a way out. They get one SCV. Can they focus fire? They're not focus firing. They're just A moving as they start a step. Oh, so they damage a lot of units. They don't really kill anything. Good grenades on those Marines, but these other Marines will not get a single Reaper because no target fire. The Reapers all get out. First battle cruisers on the way. This is a big distraction. I actually think Void Boy's in huge trouble. Void Boy builds a bunker in the main which is honestly a bizarre choice. I think it's because he sees no expansion, so he's worried about either a Doom Drop or maybe even a Battle Cruiser. 
but no stim, no shields, and just not that many marines. Straight trash, bro. Coming out from Gary. I like Gary, man. Gary's hilarious. Gary finally remembers at the 420 mark to make an orbital. Uh, he's like, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I, I chained it up. I've watched your coaching sessions, pig. Whenever I light my blunt, that's... I only make it orbital when I light another light another blunt, man. That's the only way, dude. Reaper's coming in. They're going to get another SCV or two. Marines will push them back. Dude, he's actually killed four SCVs now, which is not bad. A shame his macro sucks behind it, but I still worry 13 Marines is not really enough to beat a Battlecruiser if it's microed really well. Um, and there's no, there's no finished factory just yet. It's only now finishing. That BC teleports in. It's bad news bears for Void Boy. Luckily for Void Boy, Gary is just... What is Gary doing? We're on Gary's camera. Guys, hands off the keyboard and mouse. We're on Gary's camera. Oh my god, Gary's just clicking it across the map. Gary built a battle cruiser, sat it there for 20 seconds, and is now floating it across the map. Oh my god. Oh my god, missing a huge window to do damage here. Another bunker's going down. The bunkers will help against the battle cruiser. <laughs> and the marine count's getting high. There's 20 marines. Unfortunately, Stim never started. Void Boy forgot Stim. Forgot to put extra workers back on gas because this Reaper harass is causing troubles. Two Reapers go down. No, only one goes down. The BC is about to come in. This BC could cause big problems, especially if the second Battlecruiser teleports in to support it. Gary is supply blocked behind this on 39 supply. The Battlecruiser still not going in. Is he waiting for Yamato? Oh, Gary. Gary, you simpleton. Oh, you simpleton. What? And now he's building an engineering bay because, of course, a player who plays like this only can expand once they can build a planetary there because that's the only way they play. Still no stim or a Viking starting for Void Boy. Void Boy also hasn't scanned. Whereas obviously if your opponent hasn't expanded, you should absolutely be dropping a scan past, say, you know, four minutes or whatever it is, just to check what they're doing. Is it Marines, tanks, battle cruisers, what's going on? Uh, whenever your opponent's way down on economy from me from you, you need to double check what's happening. Finally, the battle cruiser flies in for Gary. And he's going straight for the supply depot in the main. What an absolute chad. Finally gets an SCV, another one. Marines are all coming in to close in on this. They have combat shields, so they do have 55 hit points. They don't have plus one. They don't have stim. The Marines are getting a bit of damage, but notice there's no stutter step for Void Boy here. You really want to try and stutter step underneath. I like that he's trying to build some turrets as well as a, uh, a full bunker at the front. The Marines are getting hammered. As you can see, battle crews are kiting like this. The Marines spend most of the time moving, very little time actually shooting. And the Marines are getting stuck in there behind a choke point. He's already lost so many Marines. This is a big problem for Void Boy. This is not how you want to be microing this. He's got to be building Vikings right now, but he hasn't started them. Void Boy's in trouble. The turret does come up, and that adds a bit of damage. He could just easily Yamato it, though. What's he Yamatoing? The Medivac? Oh, no, that is the turret. Okay, Yamato's the turret down. These BCs could go in and continue and win the game right now. They could keep on flying around through the production and win the game, but he's trying to bring in Widow Mines as well. Bro, I told you I'm goated. Oh my god, goated. What an absolute chad. He's, yeah, man, I told you I'm goated, bro. Oh no, the Widow Mines get the Marines. One turret. No, the turrets aren't going to finish. Gary, oh, Gary's going to get this one. Gary, this shit bag, gets both turrets. He should Yamato this bunker and take it down pretty quickly as well, unless Void Boy repairs, but Void Boy is very, very slow to repair and finish the turret. Repair! Repair! Oh my god. The, 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 the battle cruisers are very low. At least the Widow Mines will finally get taken out. Finally, its first two Vikings have emerged. Funnily enough, after all this, Void Boy is still up 10 SCVs. Vikings are going to come forward and Gary doesn't even save the battle cruiser. Gary! Oh my god, you have to recycle, bro. Yamato's a Viking there. Does take out these Marines. More Widow Mines coming in. This is a terrible spot for Void Boy. But Gary, despite appearing to do a one base all and hasn't brought SCVs to repair. These Widow Mines could move in, as could the Battle Cruiser to absolutely slaughter this mineral line. But you can tell Gary's struggling with the mechanics of it. He's also, he tried to bring SCVs! He tried to, but he didn't lower his depot. He didn't lower his depot wall, so he can't bring them. Oh, big Widow Mine hits on the mineral line. But that does mean, of course, that these uh, these Marines can start to take them out. That Battle Cruiser is very low as well. Stim is now done. So even four or five Marines stimming on that Battle Cruiser could potentially kill it. There are uh, is only one Viking out right now. Lots of Marines and Vikings are trying to be built. Void Boy needs to get those SCVs on the minerals. And I mean, turrets? I mean, I said I like the turrets. I'm, I'm going to be real, guys. I like them because it's a, a response that shoots up. Cyclones, Vikings, and more Marines building should have been the priority because these turrets can't actually help defend the main. All these SCVs aren't mining. This is far from a perfect response. Luckily, though, Gary doesn't realize the SCVs are idling here. These battle cruisers are just chilling. These SCVs are idling. Still hasn't floated the command center down. And finally, it has moved the SCVs, but isn't bringing them across the map. I mean, this is absolutely geriatric StarCraft combined with massive confidence and smack talk. And that's what I love. There is a direct correlation 
or I should say an inverse relation between your skill level in StarCraft and your confidence, as we see here with Gary, who's now ringing the main with Missile Turrets. So the guy who's got the air advantage is ringing his main base with Missile Turrets while having next to no economy. He's also setting up a Widow Mine Reaper Field in the middle of the map. <laughs> Gary. <laughs> and, and he's building Silver League Turrets because guys, remember, you need a Missile Turret here in case an enemy attack wave spawns off the edge of the map. Oh wait, this isn't a single player campaign. That physically can't happen. That Silver League still being very Silver League. <laughs> I love that people do this. It's like, I really need four missile turrets right now. I don't know how to build SCVs or produce units, but those four missile turrets, that's what's gonna win me this game. Um, now there's only four Vikings out and it seems like Void Boy's gone back to Marines and tanks forgetting that the battlecruisers are being massed. Really needs to be focusing on the Viking production. Four Vikings will not beat three battlecruisers. He's gonna go for a little Marine scout around the side of the map as well. If those guys stim in, they could kill a ton of these SCVs. There's nothing at home to defend. And it is of course a mass starport play for Gary. Gary going for four starports on two base. Still doesn't have a planetary or an orbital there. The command center is also misplaced. And he's making an orbital, so he's not using the engineering bay for anything but turrets. My god. The Widow Mines are going to move forward here, along with the Battle Cruisers. A couple of Yamatos could be a fantastic way to start this off. Does get two of those Vikings down, but the Widow Mines do scare Void Boy back. If Void Boy can get a turret up and then kind of get some scans going, or, or a tank sieged in some scans, that could be effective. Definitely needs more Vikings, though. Four more Vikings have been queued up. Needs to get that count up. And you can see the tank doing very well, pushing those Widow Mines back little by little. We've also got a drop going around the right side. Oh, the left side of the map. One tank and 12 Marines coming in towards this natural. They're a little disjointed, but it is what it is. More SCVs get pulled across, but there are Marines. They're intercepting the rally point. The natural is in trouble. Now, all Gary needs to do is teleport these battle cruisers on top of this, and he can clean this up really easily. The Silver League turret pays off big. <laughs> Gary. 300 IQ, a, a complete precog here. Not only did he know that he would wreck a Void Boy in this game, but he knew a drop would come and drop in the one spot where a turret should never be unless you're playing an incompetent player. Gary, counter incompetence with incompetence, and it works. <laughs> the battle cruisers in the back take out the Widow Mines. This one teleport, uh, the Marines, sorry. So the drop gets cleaned up, but he didn't pull any SCVs away, so we lose a lot of units. Oh, Void Boy, don't do that! Don't do that! Void Boy just stim A moves, scans into the Widow Mines, and throws away the entire Marine army. Void Boy, no. Why, bro? Why? <laughs> Let's get rid of the last Widow Mine, at least. But my god, that was painful. Uh, despite it, Void Boy has macro. Gary doesn't. Void Boy's got more than double the economy. And uh, is building more Marines, tanks, and Vikings. Vikings counter the air at this point. Six Vikings versus three BCs, soon to be eight. You had some Marines on the ground underneath that as well, and, and that's going to be massive. And Gary, of course, has way more production than he can handle. 18 SCVs, and for some reason thinks he needs four Starport Tech Labs. This is high-level play. Behind it, double Armory goes down. I can only imagine Void Boy is thinking, I need air upgrades for the Vikings. And that's not the worst idea. I mean, your opponent's shown no sign of doing anything other than making battle cruisers, so why the hell not? Um, yeah, he's also going to get high sec auto tracking. That's plus one range on missile turrets. Wow, I've I've missed Starcraft, guys. Oh, I actually also have been casting over on this side. I totally forgot to move my camera back. I always forget to do that. You guys notice whenever I do this show, I always forget to to swap my scene back from the uh, looking at the chat log rage to uh, to looking to the. Uh, the second or third or fourth game. Um, this is absolutely scary as a push still because the Widow Mines, if they get shots on the Vikings, they do 40 splash damage a piece. If Void Boy slips up and walks into the Widow Mines, the BCs can still just win the game. But I like this. Void Boy's going for a giant backstab while defending with tank, Viking, and some Marines. Is getting ship weapons on the armory and uh, is a little supply block, but building more depots. Meanwhile, Gary, the smack talk seems to have died down. Bro, I told you I'm goated when there was a sick Widow Mine battlecruiser contained. But then lost the battle cruiser, lost the widow mines, and it's been awfully silent since then. It looks like Void Boy is the one scanning right now. Scans both the main and the natural sees there's nothing there and is gonna just run on in. Uh-oh, Gary's in trouble right now. Gary has only two widow mines at home. The Marines are gonna do epic damage right now. Oh man, those widow mines get taken out. That whole natural getting mass turret behind his natural. Oh my lord. Gary with the priorities. Absolutely mad. Just ooh. Triple teleport does come home. Okay, so the Marines are on a one-way trip. I like this move from Void Boy. He says, okay, this is going to get cleaned up, but I can get in and kill a lot more SCVs before those BCs get on top of me. The SCVs are trying to run away, but oh man, so many go down. 
So many go down, down to just 11 SCVs, and he's actually even focus firing his Void Boy. Uh, Void Boy will damage a Battle Cruiser, I guess, now, just before going down. Nine SCVs versus 50, a few Widow Mines, and a forward sensor tower for Gary. At this point, I've got to question Gary's priorities. Shit talk, good. Building a Battle Cruiser reasonably quickly, good. Building Reapers at the start and harassing with them, good. Everything else, F tier. I feel like Gary may have gotten as far as they have on the ladder simply by winning with the Battle Cruisers and the couple Widow Mines. I don't think Gary has many other moves than that. And Void Boy is just like, okay, I'm hunting those BCs now. This is a little dangerous, but it, it seems to be working. I mean, you could just win a base trade technically. Or you've also got quite a few turrets to fall back on, even though the main is mostly unturreted. Uh, once again, is scanning there on the natural in the main. The Vikings could come in and land, but here we go. BCs are finally going to go in and get some action going. And this is kind of scary. Widowmine BC hitting the front. They're going to take out some siege tanks. The Widowmines firing behind that as a safe area for those BCs to fall back on. Void rays, uh, sorry, Vikings are starting to come forward as well as the missile turret with eight range getting a lot of damage in. Ooh, Yamato's coming forward. The Widow Mine's going to take out the Marines. Nice moves. One BC deep in the red. Meanwhile, Marine tank counterattack is coming. Void Boy seems to have forgotten about the Vikings on the other side of the map. Needs to get those down there to help defend this. Fusion Core is going to get focused down. And we are going to see... Actually, this Battle Cruiser is going to pop with a lot of STEM Marines underneath it. Looks like the Battle Cruisers are teleporting home once again. Void Boy forces the teleport. And now the Vikings are going to fly in. He's going to try and get it with the Marine Viking. Those BCs are awfully damaged right now. The BCs need to fly towards these Vikings to get on top of them. Gary panicking and running away though. Gary. Oh, Void Boy drops there. How's it going? Oh, man. I, he didn't type it, but I can hear the How's it going, buddy? How you doing, mate? You having a good game? Oh, uh, you know, you win some, you lose some. You're lucky I took a dump. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Gary's excuse is that he walked away to take a shit during the game. <laughs> no. <laughs> boy, boy says same. <laughs> uh, out your dick? What? <laughs> so, so Boy was like, yeah, I'm, I'm lightweight. I'm more agile. I took a dump so I could be more agile. And he was with the backsides, but Gary says, well, did you poo out of your dick? Gary has taken this discourse right from where it was at a fourth grade level back to back to first grade first grade from a bad home because most first graders don't know about dicks and, and pooing out of your dick well no one knows about pooing out of your dicks because that's not a thing <laughs> it's it's coming coming from a ruined home the uh oh yeah you took a dump did you do it out your dick i don't i don't know why that gets me so much the you're lucky i took a dump as well like can, can we identify a point in the game where there was zero APM? Because if so, that was a really impressive dump. Let's just fast forward from 10 minutes to 16 minutes really quickly on eight times speed. I'll mute the sound. And let's just kind of try and, and see, is there ever a point where the APM hits zero? Because if not, that means, Gary, you guys have heard about uh, World of Warcraft gamers who have a pee bottle, right? During raid night because they can't get up from the computer. Well, if Gary was able to keep the APM up, and remember, I always take... Our, our, our players at their words. I always give them the, the benefit of the, the doubt and say, yeah, they're probably being honest. The APM is a solid 80 all throughout. Maybe not as solid as Gary's dump, but definitely something where I think Gary may not just have a pee water bottle, may have a StarCraft bucket. So when he's in a bit of a sweaty game and he needs to drop trowel, he may actually have a bucket that he squats on while playing the game. Oh, wait, there's zero APM, but that was only when he was insulting him at the end. So either Gary's lying or he has a bucket. You guys let me know in the comment section which you think is more likely. And remember the next time you're losing a game of StarCraft, just tell your opponent it's only because you went to take a dump. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you're enjoying the salt mine. Send me in your replays with ridiculous and insane uh, comments from your opponents below. See you next episode. Goodbye and good night.